Hi guys, welcome back. Steel Jan here and today we're going to talk about some things I've been thinking about about future designs for vaping and e-cigs um, and specifically right now I'm going to talk to you about connectors. Now I started thinking about all this stuff, I've been thinking about it for a long time, but le recently I've been evaluating the Darwin and I just uh, think the Darwin's got so many great features and so many safety features built in and stuff. It got me even thinking further about just doing a video for you and talking a little bit about what I think is important for safety features and where I think we need to head. So this first discussion I want to talk to you about is connectors. And the reason why I want to talk to you about connectors is because of the possibility of a short circuit in a mod or even a uh, commercially bought uh, PV, e-cig. And the thing is, we used to use um, protected lithium ion batteries as the standard. And now folks are moving towards lithium ion manganese batteries, um, IMRs. Hang on a second. We use, now I'm going to do this off the top of my head, so if I make a mistake, I'm sorry, but I'm just doing this off the top of my head. We used to use, or most of us, some of us currently use, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, ICR, and now folks are going to IMR. I hope you can read this. ICR, R is for round, C is for cobalt, that's what the cathode material is in the battery, and I is for, these. this is standards for lithium, designators for lithium batteries, so this is lithium ion. And so an, an IMR battery, this is round, this is manganese, can she spell manganese, manganese? And this of course is ion. Now this is supposed to be safer chemistry, safer chemistry than these. We use these in uh, vaping as, we use them with protected. We use them with the protected circuitry in it. Don't ever use these as unprotected. The, so far any reports I've seen of these batteries exploding have been from using non-protected lithium ion batteries. Non-protected. These kind. Where they stack uh, the little 123 batteries and these can't deliver enough instantaneous amps and they rupture and then explode. So these are protected. Now here's the deal. Uh, these are protected, but if the protection fails, if it fails, if protection fails, we have the potential for boom. On an IMR battery, we have safer chemistry, but these pack a tremendous amount of amperage, instantaneous amperage, far more than we need for vaping. This thing can dump 60 amps in some cases of current. So if these things are shorted out, they will tr release, it, they're, they've got absolutely no protection in the battery. They'll release a tremendous amount of heat plus current. These will reach a, a temperature of like 240 degrees Fahrenheit over 100 degrees, 105-ish, 10-ish, something like that, centigrade, in about 30 seconds. If this is shorted out, things are going to go very wrong very fast and no protection. And so if you're going to use IMR batteries, say for chemistry, yes, but use them in a mod that are designed for them, that have short circuit protection. Now the under voltage protection, well, if you run them down too far to where they won't charge anymore, that's you're just going to have to watch for that. But it, you need to use them in mods, or we need to use them in mods that have short circuit protection. Let's look at some mods that do have short circuit protection, that have batteries that change out. Well, this one doesn't have batteries that change out, but this is a Got Vapes Ultimo 950, comes in lots of names. You don't change the battery out, but it's got short circuit protection built in. This is a Dubaco Super Tanker, uses a 14500 battery, and it has internal short circuit protection. This is a lava tube. It has internal short circuit protection. This mod is actually designed to designed specifically to use IMR batteries. So is the Proveri. 
I don't have one of those, but so is the Proveri. Designed to use IMR batteries, has short circuit protection. Now let's look at some mods that, common mods that do not have short circuit protection. Saber Touch, no short circuit protection. The Ali, beautiful mod, no short circuit protection. This is the Omega, wonderful vape, no short circuit protection. So in these mods, when these mods were designed, the designer was thinking you're going to use protected lithium batteries. The designer never knew you were going to use vastly more amperage batteries with no protection, no short, no built-in short circuit protection. I mean, I'm not saying to everybody, oh, the lithium manganese batteries are so bad. No, I, I, I'm not saying that about any battery. I'm not saying these are better or worse or anything else. I'm saying we got to realize what we have in our hands. And it's not just that the batteries are safer chemistry or this is safer, that is safe. But you got to think it's not just when it's in the mod. Hang on a second. My little prop table is crowded over here. It's not just that the, the battery's safe inside the mod, but you're going to be taking the battery out, handling it. Now remember, with vastly more amperage and no short circuit protection, you're going to be handling it, you're going to be putting it in a charger, you're going to be charging it, you're going to be taking out a charger, you're going to be storing extra batteries somewhere with extremely high amperages. Think about this as that you're going to take your car battery out of your car and bring it in. Where are you going to set it in your house? And how good a care would you take of a car battery if you brought it in and set it inside your house? Actually, we should be thinking that way in any of the e-cig batteries that we use so far. These are scary batteries. These may be less scary. Uh, but they're not going to go boom. There's no boom. There's not supposed to be a boom in IMR batteries. But it, the dumpage of tremendous amounts of heat and current should scare the bejesus out of any of us. That's just what I'm saying. So now why am I going back to connectors? Why does this tie in with connectors? Okay, let me show you. Oh, hang on, I wanted to show you one. Well, I won't show you that right now. But um, I'll show you it later maybe. But this is a standard Ego battery, the good old 350 or whatever milliamp hour battery. And this is a low res dual coil tank cartomizer. Cartomizer tank, however you say it. Low res dual coil. And look, I can screw this onto this. Well, what's gonna happen if I push this button? I'm not gonna push this button, but what would happen if I push this button? Thermal runaway, most very highly likely of this battery. Destruction thermal runaway or just ruination. Maybe it won't explode or burn up, but it's going to mess up the battery. I may get a couple of satisfactory vapes before it goes, but that's it. So why on earth can this screw in to this? We talk about having 808s and 510s and then and then and then and all this sort of thing. When that's not, those are just marketing things. Somebody decided to have a different through, screw thread design, male and female on one side, okay. But it doesn't do anything for us. It doesn't do anything for us in the vaping community to help us stay safe. As consumers, we're used to, hey, this screws into that, then that's meant for that, right? Not in vaping. And maybe we should think about that it should be. This is, let me get close up. This is a 510 battery connector. And this is the center, this is the positive, this is the negative. And all that is protecting this from having a short is this tiny, tiny silicon gasket right there. If you screw a cartomizer down to, or atomizer, either one, down too hard, or if you've got it on a mod and you bump it too hard, th there's a silicon gasket inside both the battery connector and the atomizer or carmizer that screws into it. Same little silicon gasket in both. If you screw it down too hard or it gets bumped and this little silicon gasket can tear, guess what you got? Dead short. So right off the bat, you've got positive and negative. Hang on, let me get that 
Ego battery. Right off the bat, oops, you've got positive and negative way too close to each other. And, and now we're talking high amperage. With IMR batteries, we're talking really high amperages that we could deliver through here. And that little piece of silicon, one in the battery, one in the atomizer, carmizer is all that's protecting us from a dead short. When, if it's an IMR battery in there, what's going to happen? A tremendous dumpage <coughs> of heat and current. So here's my proposal for future designs. And I'm not saying this is a good idea. What I want everybody to do is start thinking. And I'd like for the folks who actually do design and manufacture E6 to give this some thought and figure out a future world where if it plugs together, it goes together. And if it doesn't plug together, it doesn't go together. It doesn't work together. Now here's a, a mod that in my ever famous Grim Green impersonation video, I think this doubled as a helix. <laughs> <laughs> but this was, this was what I used for that. And then it's made appearances in other videos too for different demos and funny things I've done. But let's call this, you see what I put in here? I put in here a three-prong receptacle. And what I'd like to see some kind of standardization is, let's have a three-prong or some kind of, of uh, arrangement so that you have, um, this would be a standard res, this would be the standard res cartomizer or atomizer. And what I'd like to see first is, I'd like to see positive and negative clearly separated so they can't short together. Clearly separated, not just a little tiny sliver of silicon. And then if you got three prongs, if you got two prongs on this, this would be standard resistance or higher. Yes, I could use this on that. Or, if this is low resistance, if I want to use low resistance, this is low resistance, I got three prongs. This has three holes, I can plug this into that. Yes, great. So I know this mod can be low resistance or standard resistance and higher atomizers and cartomizers. They'll work together fine and beautifully. But let's say I bought this mod. This is a cheesy. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's a roll paper tube. And this one only has two holes. See? Two holes. I can use standard resistance atomizers or cartomizers in it just fine. Yay! That would work. But if I try to use a low res atomizer or cartomizer on it, it's going to have three prongs. It won't go. So the future for this tiny Ego battery would be some kind of a little thing. This should only have a two prong on it. And sure, you could put it down and have a screw threads around it to hold it secure, or some kind of sleeving, like a drip shield type of sleeving or something to hold it in securely. I'm just saying, make it a different prongage. Make it a different connector. Yeah? Okay, so. That's my idea. No just 510, 808, blah, 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 blah. Change this whole structure up and have it some kind of a prong idea. If it fits, then yes, you can use it. And if it doesn't, you can't. So never again could somebody take a 350 milliamp hour Ego battery or whatever this is, I can't remember now, and put a dual coil low res cartomizer tank mod on top and it fits perfectly. Yeah. I got one more connector to show you that I'd like to change. Now I hope you don't think I was picking on the mods that I showed you that were not short circuit, not short circuit protected. The truth is, almost all the mods, 99.9% .9 probably of the mods out there, are not short circuit protected. I wouldn't put an IMR battery in them, <laughs> but it's up to you. Now this is something that I really love, and I use it. It is pass-through. I'm not going to say what brand it is. Maybe I will at Smoke Simage Volt. Look what's on the end of it. A plain USB connector. And most, most, a goodly proportion of pass-throughs where you plug them in, you put a cartomizer or atomizer on the end, and you vape them. Most of them have a USB connector on the end. But you can't plug this into a computer safely. 
computer's USB uses, hang on, because now we're in the connectors, but now we're going to switch over to the USB portion. USB 2.0 spec, which is what we currently are doing. This is a USB 2.0 connector. This is 500 milliamps is what it's designed to uh, deliver. Half a, half of an amp, 0.5 of an amp. But this pass-through, even with a volt cartomizer on it, which is about 2.5 ohms, needs almost an amp and a half. You shouldn't vape this on anything that it can't deliver an amp and a half. My proposal is, if whatever gizmo comes out for vaping, if it has a USB connector in it, it has to no, not pull more than 500 milliamps of current. If it's going to pull more than 500 milliamps of current, make this a different connector. Or make it all one piece with you plug it into the wall and the plug it into the wall thing is part of this, not, not a connector. But in the vaping world, we should, we should try to self-regulate and get rid of USB connectors on things that demand more current than what a computer's USB connector is supposed to provide. You can burn up your computer. You wreck your computer. You, who knows? So, yeah. That's all on connectors, I think. But the thing I'm doing this for is, you know, folks, if we don't want the government to step in and start regulating e-cigs, and we want to do everything we can to stop the bans on e-cigs, then I think we ought to step up, step up to the plate and provide some self-regulation. Maybe part of this could be uh, some sort of a committee or regulatory body that's to come up with inside the vapor community with some sort of manager. Uh, some, it would be great to have a corporate sponsor <laughs> or some kind of sponsor because some of this stuff will take uh, money. Um, maybe, and I hate when money gets involved in anything because it just turns people against each other. Um, and, uh, and have people volunteer their efforts, like I'm a retired engineer, uh, to help come up with these ideas and implement them. And then we self-regulate. If our, if our vaping community would self-regulate modders and stuff, um, then we don't, we, uh, I can't say we won't, but we run a less chance of the government stepping in and start regulating or shutting us down. So that's it, guys. <laughs> I know that was a mouthful, wasn't it? Until next time, this is Still Jan Out, and I got lots more ideas. I'm coming up with some more stuff. I got a whole notebook full over here I want to spill on you. <laughs> Until next time, guys, this is Still Jan Out. Thank you so much for watching, and hope you have a great vaping day. This is an Altoids mod that's based on my, uh, it's based on the same innards as my variable voltage mod that I built that you can see on a previous video. After I came out with this, they started calling this the Evercool mod. So it's reproduced all over the place. It uses a TI uh, 8100, as I remember, 8100W. And so this is an Altoids mod. I wanted to try the new uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, 4.8 volts each. So it's almost 10 volts. Uh, vary it down to 3.77 for my testing. And so far, this is working out great. Nickel metal hydride batteries are good. Thank you, Puck Mod, for introducing us all to that. Okay, now I'm gone. It's still 10 out. Bye, guys. <laughs> still Jen.